Yo, the name is Alpern and today we are taking a look at the US Forces faction, its tech tree, what units there are to select from, their costs and how the US support centers function. US, similar to DAC, is one of the more complicated factions in Company of Heroes 3, as not only does it consist of a total of 5 tiers, including tier 0, but also has an important choice to make quite early on, which will be exclusive and exclude other upgrades during the course of a game. In the beginning of a match, the US has quite a few routes it can take for its opening units. In tier 0, the US has access to their main worker and utilities unit, the engineer, as well as a scout squad. The engineer should eventually be picked up, as it's the US main way of repairing and getting flamethrowers or sweepers, and the US starting unit is a scout squad and thus doesn't have an engineer to begin with. The scout squads themselves are quite nice, as they can cap territory faster than other infantry, and once you get the 25 munitions upgrade on them, they gain access to both a flare and a smoke for free, making them an excellent machine gun counter. There is also the medic post in tier 0, which provides the US with healing. However, compared to DAC, the US can also afford to start the game by taking either tier 1 or tier 2 with its starting resources. In tier 1, the US gets access to the 4x4 truck, as well as the rifleman. The rifleman will usually be the US's main infantry, and thus this tech structure will probably be the most common to start the game by constructing. In tier 1, the US also has access to the M1 mortar, as well as a various upgrades for their riflemen, such as bars and the grenade package, which enables both grenades and snares for riflemen. In tier 2, you find more specialized units, such as the Vertical, the Souk Squad, the Sniper, and an M3 truck. Worth noting here is that not all of these are accessible at this stage, as the M3 and the bars requires a support center to be teched. A support center is also required to tech any further into either tier 3 or tier 4, and thus another decision has to be made for the US between three exclusive options. Air, Infantry or Mechanized. All three of these options comes with quite cool and interesting benefits, as well as extremely different upgrades to tech into later in the game. Beginning with the air support center, you natively get access to three off maps, no matter what battle group you pick. The off maps, a free recon run with a large cooldown, a 60 munitions strafing run and a 90 munitions dive bomb, makes this selection great for team games as you can support teammates and be present across large maps. The upgrades for the air support center also vastly improves these off maps while being comparatively cheap to the other upgrades in the other support centers. The first upgrade, the advanced recon, gives the recon pass extra vision. The air supply upgrade makes all the off maps cheaper by one third making the strafe cost 40 munitions and the bombing run 60 munitions. The next upgrade, Air Supremacy, reduces the cooldown of all three off maps. And the final upgrade, Double Sortie, makes all off maps do their run twice, meaning double the recon pass, double the strafe and double the bomb. The next support center, Infantry, comes with a free captain squad that can buff nearby infantry. The upgrades are all quite infantry focused, starting with munitions surplus that reduces cooldown on infantry abilities, as well as decreasing the cost of weapon upgrades by 50%, making this choice excellent early if you intend to tech for bars. The demolitions package upgrade allows your infantry to plant demolition charges and anti-tank mines. The next upgrade, Advanced Logistics, reduces the reinforce cost by 25%, as well as increasing veterancy gain by reinforcing your squads. And finally, Survival Training increases the health of all of your infantry by 10 health points, 
which after some math I have concluded is about 15%, though it impacts different infantry squads differently. As you may notice, these abilities are quite expensive and may make your late tech for vehicles quite difficult, but could also prove to have a very strong snowball effect of getting you the strongest early game possible. Now the third and the final support center, Mechanized, focuses on upgrading all your armor and vehicles in the US roster. It also has the added benefit of providing free repairs at your base that will repair any close damaged vehicles. The upgrades in the Mechanized support center are specialized munitions which enables a new ability for every vehicle, such as HE shells, though it is dependent on the vehicle what new ability it gets. The improvised armor increases the armor of all vehicles, including light vehicles. The smoke shell upgrade gives all vehicles smoke launchers, increasing their survivability as well as their offensive power. And finally, the final upgrade upgrades the M4A1 Shermans with a way stronger gun, allowing it to do better versus all targets. As previously mentioned, this decision for the US is exclusive, meaning whichever support center you pick, you also remove the accessibility of the other ones. Thus you should plan your build quite carefully around whatever support center you pick. Once you have picked and unlocked a support center, the bars upgrade as well as the M3 becomes available, as well as both tier 3 and tier 4. In tier 3, the US gets access to the M8 Greyhound, which is a strong anti-infantry vehicle. It also gets access to the M180 gun, and the Chaffe, which is a heavy light vehicle that actually has quite decent penetration, allowing it to punch way above its weight class. Tier 4 is a lot more expensive than Tier 3, meaning you most likely will stop and grab at least one of the vehicles in Tier 3, though you could also skip Tier 3 entirely and use the M3 as a light vehicle instead, as it has some decent upgrades such as the Kraut Mower. Once the US reaches its final tier, Tier 4, it gets access to the Generalist M4A1 Sherman, as well as the Hellcat Tank Destroyer. It also has access to a Dozer Sherman equipped with an anti-infantry howitzer. Thus the US has a quite nice vehicle roster of three quite distinctive vehicles. Now most likely these unit costs and their placement in the tech tree will change with balance patches. So I will keep updating these tech tree images. You can find high res versions of the latest tech trees I've shown in the video over at my discord. The link's in the description. If you like this video, please do make sure you're subscribed to support me as a creator. And if you have any plans of purchasing Company of Heroes 3, you can do so while simultaneously supporting me by using the, the link in the description and using code Alpern on checkout. Thank you very, very much for watching.